Hey everybody, this is Dr. Ryan. <clears throat> this is your five minutes of fire. Uh, so today is a, is a health tip and it's about how to turn your body into a fat burning machine. And, and it's really simple. If you want your body to be really good at burning fat, you gotta train it to burn fat. You know, the worst thing that you could do before a workout is to eat a bunch of carbohydrates because you're, you're training your body to rely on carbohydrates for energy because your body's always gonna pick carbohydrates over fat for energy if it's available because it's a lot quicker fuel source. The problem is, if your body's trained, if your cells are trained to burn carbohydrates for fuel, if you don't have carbohydrates readily available, meaning you know you don't eat every couple of hours, or you don't eat a lot of bread, pasta, rice, cookies, crackers, chips, that kind of thing, if you don't have carbohydrates in your system, you're gonna feel really, really hungry. So the number one reason why people are hungry all the time and why they feel like they have to snack, and, and people you know, will say, <clears throat> I'm not losing weight, even though I'm not eating a lot, is because they're training their body to burn uh, sugar for fuel instead of fat, you know, and, it, and it's not necessarily your fault because we've been trained to do this as a society. Even if you look at the the FDA's uh, food pyramid, pyramid, you know, 80% of what you're supposed to eat is carbohydrate. It's it's fruit, pasta, rice, um, you know, bread, that kind of stuff. And there there's you know a, such a thing as a healthy version of those things. The problem is. We eat way too much of that. You know, less than 10% of your diet should come from carbohydrates. So the thing is, if your body's relying on or dependent on or trained to burn carbohydrates for fuel, then then when you don't have carbohydrates in your system, even though you have all this fat, you know, laying around in your body, you know, most of us, if you have over 10% body fat, you have more than enough fat um, to fuel you throughout the day. You know, I, I just got done doing a 40 mile bike ride. Uh, on an empty stomach. All I had was one cup of bulletproof coffee, which is uh, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of MCT oil, or I use Brain Octane from Bulletproof. It's just a concentrated form of MCT oil, like coconut oil, for instance. Uh, and then coffee, and I just blend that up, and it just gets my body in a state of ketosis, and um, that's it, you know? And I, and I actually hit a PR today. I averaged 20 miles an hour for two straight hours, 40 miles, and I feel great, you know, I'm not even hungry, and it's because my body the whole time has been burning the fat, even though I don't have a ton, you know, I have probably uh, nine, you know, nine and a half percent body fat right now, but even still, it's enough to fuel my body when I, when I don't have any food in my stomach, and that's the thing, like, if you want to turn your body into a fat melting machine, it's got to be good at burning fat even at rest, and so the, the cool part is, you know, if you get your body into a state of ketosis, which is basically when yeah, your cells are burning fat for energy instead of glucose or sugar, then even when you don't eat, like when you're sleeping at night, your metabolism's, metabolisms <laughs> sorry, my lips are a little numb, your metabolism is gonna continue to burn fat for energy even while you sleep. So you'll actually burn fat and lose weight while you sleep versus if your cells are <clears throat> trained to burn sugar, you know, even if you eat at 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and that's why a lot of you want to want to have a, a sugary snack or like crackers or bread or something late at night, it's because glucose or sugar can only stay in your system for, you know, a, like an hour or two. And so insulin is released, it's a hormone that your pancreas le releases to, to shuttle sugar into your cells because you can't have a lot of sugar in your bloodstream at any given time, otherwise you go into a diabetic coma or hyperglycemic shock. And so you know, the point is, you can only have so much glucose in your bloodstream at any given time. So by the time, you know, a couple hours goes by and the glucose is out of your, your blood and into your cells, uh, your body's gonna start going, man, there's, there's no energy left. I have no more glucose. Even though you have all this, this tons of fat, you know, around your midsection or your thighs or wherever it is, uh, your body doesn't recognize it as energy because it's going, well, yeah, I know I'm fat. I know I got all this stuff laying around, but I don't know, I don't know what to do with that. I've never had to do anything with that before. So the thing is, if you starve your body of sugar, basically what I mean is, you know, it's not to say that you should never eat sugar, but less than 10% of your diet is, is carbohydrate, then it forces your body to start looking around for other, uh, other methods of energy or other sources of energy. And so it's gonna finally go, wow, you know what, I've had all this energy all the time, you know, the whole time. Now, I, now I'm, gonna, I'm gonna learn how to burn it. And what's cool is your body actually prefers fat for energy over sugar anyway. If you remember back to high school biology, you know, we learned that, that a, a molecule of fat provides twice as much energy as sugar and it's longer lasting, it's more sustainable. But the, again, the problem is if, if your body doesn't know how to burn it, you know, you, you, you could be 400 pounds with all this extra energy and that's what fat is. I mean, next time you look in the mirror and you, think, and you see fat, just think to yourself, I'm not fat, it's just I'm just carrying around, around a lot of extra gasoline. For my for my fuel tank you know i just need to train my body how to burn it and become more efficient at that and the way you do that 
is stop eating sugar, stop eating the carbs, and start exercising on an empty stomach in the morning because what that's going to do is when you exercise, obviously you put your body into a higher state of energy demand and your body's forced to kick up its uh, you know, search for energy sources. And so if you work out on an empty stomach, your body's gonna be forced to, to turn to the fat for energy. And in the, in the beginning, it's probably gonna be really uncomfortable. You're gonna be, probably feel really tired. You're probably gonna um, feel like weak and like you can't lift weights or you, you don't have any energy, you can't push yourself. But after a while, you'll get into this state where you actually prefer it. You know, the worst thing you could do, the, the worst way to stab, or the, the number one way to sabotage your workout is to eat something, especially eat something carbohydrate right before you work out. Now, if you're competing, if you're racing, that's a different story. In fact, one of the reasons why I eat a low carb, high fat, ketogenic diet is because then when I do race, my, my cells are a lot more sensitive to the sugar, you know, healthy sugars, carbohydrates, like I typically during a race, I'll, I'll eat uh, almond butter that has honey or maple syrup in it, like organic maple syrup, just a tiny bit. And then my cells go, oh my God, you know, that's like, it's like octane for my cells because it's not used to that sugar. And so it's like a little extra boost. Whereas if you eat sugar all the time, your body becomes dependent on it and it doesn't have the same effect. And your body's not very good at burning fat anymore for fuel. So again, work out on an, on an empty stomach, Less than 10% of your diet's carbohydrate. Put your body into a state of ketosis and you'll see the, felt, the fat start to melt away. Have a great day.